We're going to hear from Mr. Bryce. Legislators and policymakers in Washington need a big dose of energy realism, even bigger dose of energy humanism. Europe provides a case study for what not to do. Millions of Europeans are facing the prospect of a cold winter without enough affordable energy to heat their homes. Fertilizer plants and steel mills are closing because of high energy prices. Europe's price hikes are being caused by underinvestment in hydrocarbons due to aggressive decarbonization ESG policies. Second, they're being caused by overinvestment in weather-dependent renewables, which has left the continent vulnerable to wind droughts. Just yesterday, in Britain, spot prices for electricity exceeded $4,000 a megawatt hour due to low wind speeds. Third, Europe is prematurely shuttering its coal and nuclear plants. And finally, it is relying too heavily on imported energy and in particular, Russian natural gas. The implications of Europe's price spikes include soaring inflation, deindustrialization, and increased burdens on consumers, especially the working poor. The knock-on effects could last for months or even years. Fertilizer made from hydrocarbons is the food of food. Numerous fertilizer plants in Europe and around the world are shutting down because of high natural gas prices. This will mean less food production and therefore higher food prices, which will lead to additional inflation. The United States must not emulate Europe's disastrous energy blueprint. We need energy realism. Energy is the economy. Energy nourishes human potential. Hydrocarbons now provide 82% of our total energy and about 60% of our electricity supplies. The U.S. today gets 18 times more energy from hydrocarbons as it does from wind and solar combined. The myriad claims being made by climate activists, politicians, and elite academics that we can run our economy solely on wind and solar and a few drops of hydropower have no basis in physics, math, or history. Furthermore, wherever renewables have been ramped up, as in Europe, energy prices have soared. Senators, look at California, where electricity prices are absolutely exploding. Wood McKenzie estimates that converting our grid to renewables could cost $4.5 trillion dollars or roughly $35,000 for every family in America. How could such a staggering cost result in the just energy transition that we hear so much about? Energy realism? Since 2015, more than 300 communities across the country, from Maine to Hawaii, have rejected wind projects. Over the past six months alone, massive solar projects in Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Montana have been rejected by local communities. More realism, trying to convert our energy and power systems to renewables will make the U.S. reliant on China for critical minerals like neodymium, dysprosium, and cobalt. Why is this okay? Relying on renewables would also require building hundreds of thousands of miles of new high-voltage transmission lines. But the November 2nd referendum in Maine showed very clearly, again, that rural Americans do not want high-voltage transmission lines slashing through their neighborhoods. Garroting America's hydrocarbon sector by killing pipelines banning natural gas, halting drilling on federal lands, electrifying everything, and never-ending tax breaks for big wind and big solar will not solve global climate change. Instead, those moves will turbocharge inflation, imperil our energy security, and impose regressive taxes on the poor and the working class. Staking our economy, as Europe has done, on weather-dependent renewables amounts to unilateral energy disarmament that will hurt us and benefit Russia, China, and OPEC. Who will stand up for rural America and against the landscape-destroying sprawl of wind and solar? Who will speak against the federally subsidized slaughter of our birds and bats by the wind industry? Expensive energy is the enemy of the poor. Who in the Senate will stand up for them? Who in Congress will stand up for the affordability, reliability, and resilience of our electric grid, which is being undermined by this senseless rush to renewables and the premature retirement of our nuclear reactors? Where are the pro-nuclear, pro-energy realists? Where, I must ask you, are the energy humanists? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bryce.